We'd like to welcome all of you to Saturday Story. I'm reminded in the Word of God where the Lord told his disciples, he said, get in a ship and go to the other side. I really don't know where the other side is, but possibly it is a call to purpose, a call to potential, a call to power. But they got in the ship doing what the Lord told them to do and ran into a storm. Is it possible to do the will of God and run into a storm? Absolutely. Because you see, the, in the storm, something powerful happened there. Because you see, before they were arguing about who's going to sit on the right hand, who's going to sit on the left hand, who's going to be the more prominent one. But you see, all of a sudden, Davy Jones's locker looked like it was going to be their motel accommodations that night. And the storm had a way of blowing all the anxiety and all of the vying for position out of their spirit. When all of a sudden, they began to cry. You see, Jesus was asleep in that storm. He, he knew how to sleep in a storm. I pray that some of you would learn how to do that because storms are going to come even though you're in the will of God. But when they woke him up, he stepped out and looked at that storm. I've never seen this before, never heard anyone say anything about this or preach about it. But he named the storm. He called it peace. He just simply said, peace, be still. There is a storm that brews in all of our lives, but the storm that brews in our lives is a storm called peace because sometimes it's in that storm where we find our true purpose, our, through, our absolute true calling and what God has intended for our lives. And this brings me today to Saturday's story. It's a story of a man who who started a business. He started very small. He built the business up. It was doing good. And all of a sudden, he, he couldn't figure it out. Just like many times, we, we can't figure out why the negatives come into our lives and why bad things happen to, to good people. We can't figure all that out. But yet his business began to, to nosedive. It just, just he wasn't doing good. And all of a sudden, he, he realized that if something don't happen, I'm going bankrupt. I'll have to close this business that's been my life's dream all of my life. And, and so I, you talk about a storm when you feel like that everything is falling and just, just cascading from beneath you and you're falling into an abyss of despair and dejection and loneliness and hopelessness. So he just said, I, I got to clear my mind. So he left the office walking down to the park. It was in the park where the flowers were blooming and there the lake with the swans swimming. He sat down on a bench. He put his, his head in his hands, tears running down his face. He said, God, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do when all of a sudden an elderly man walked up to him and sat down by him, put his hand on his shoulder, said, son, I was walking through the park and I saw you here. It's very evident that you're distressed. Could you tell me about it? And the man needed somebody to talk to. We all do in life. He just began to pour it out. Maybe. Maybe you're holding some things in your heart. You just need to talk to somebody. And he did. He poured it out. He said, look like I'm going to lose my business. I, I worked so hard and I, I can't figure it out of what in the world is happening. Suddenly, unexpectedly, the old gentleman reached in his coat pocket, pulled out a checkbook, began to write. And uh, he asked the man the name of the company and he gave it to him. 
And suddenly he tore the check out and folded it, handed it to him. He said, I want you to meet me back here one year from today to see how things are going. And so he stuck it in his pocket. The old man got up and walked away. You can imagine the anxiety that filled this man's heart because he certainly wasn't expecting this to happen. When he reached in his pocket and he opened up the check, he got numb all over. He, he couldn't believe. Tears began to gush down his face. It was a check for $500,000. Signed, John D. Rockefeller. He jumped to his feet. He said, oh my. There's a new lease on life. He ran back to the office. He ran up into the office, called all of the personnel and the staff together and began to tell them, listen, something powerful has happened. And then he, he felt a check. I'm just not going to tell him. I'm just going to tell him that something powerful has happened, that we've got a new incentive, a new, a new hope of tomorrow. Just a... Uh, and see, I, I'm going to, in his mind, he said, I'm going to put this check in, in the safe because I got something that I can fall back on. I've got something that if everything fails, I've got $500,000 to fall back on to save my company. So he, he, he called all the staff together and said, we're going to go to work like we've never worked before. And sure enough, this attitude of success and this attitude of, of, of hope and help seemed to filter throughout all the employees of the company. And all of a sudden, they began to take a new incentive and a, uh, had, had new energy. And within months, the company turned around and began to make money. Within six months, it was pouring in. Eight months, nine, ten, eleven, money was coming. And the company had literally turned around and now was prosperous and was about to enter the New York Stock Exchange. And then the man looked and, oh my, today's the day. Today's the day to meet Mr. Rockefeller in the park and to thank him. But, and then he thought, that, well, I never cashed a check. I didn't have to, but he went to the park, sat down on the bench when all of a sudden he was sitting there looking and watching the pigeons feed and, and the, the beautiful flowers blooming, the kids playing, the swans swimming, when suddenly the old man appeared. And, and as, as he was about to speak, as the old gentleman was about to say something, a nurse ran up to him, took him by the arm and said, come on now back to the, come on back now to the home, said, you wandered off again. He said, sir, I hope he's not, hadn't bothered you. Said, we can't hardly keep him in the home. Said, he wanders in this park, going around, portraying to be John D. Rockefeller, writing bogus checks is not worth the paper they're written on. And she led him away. And he sat there with his mouth open, his eyes wide going, oh my. And then it dawned on him. I just received something that gave me a hope and inspiration to rise above my defeats, to rise above my negatives. Something that gave me a ray of light that shined through the dark clouds of my soul that gave me to life. It was just a piece of paper that wasn't worth anything. But to me, it was a voice that said, Peace. My storm was named Peace. And therefore, as the scripture said, they found themselves on the other side. And maybe, maybe you will too. I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe you'll find yourself there.
Because today I come to speak into your storm. And I'm calling it peace. Peace. Wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. And you will find yourself on the other side of this trial. On the other side of this situation. Because you heard the name of your storm today it was named peace. I wish you would share this with someone and let them know that it may be a Eurocdalen in your life. This vessel may be torn and pulled aside and maybe God's trying to blow something out of your spirit, out of your heart, out of your life that doesn't need to be there to let you understand that we all going to dip together if we stay afloat. We're all going to get, because all the water in the ocean won't affect the vessel as long as it stays there and doesn't get in here. So don't allow, don't allow the bitterness, don't allow the defeat to get inside the vessel. Let's work together to get to the other side. Please share it. God bless you today as I pray.